The Linux ecosystem presents a curious dichotomy in its relationship with innovation. On one hand, we witness fierce debates whenever established projects undergo modifications. Every change to GNOME or KDE unleashes endless discussions on forums, flame wars on GitHub, and community schisms that take on the tones of ideological wars. On the other hand, when a completely new project emerges, especially if it is written in a language considered modern, like Rust, the community transforms into a chorus of worshippers. Cosmic Desktop sits exactly at the center of this dynamic. It is not simply a desktop environment, it has become a symbol, a totem, protected by an undeclared yet pervasive taboo. Criticizing Cosmic feels almost like committing technological sacrilege. This ideological schizophrenia reveals something profound about the psychology of the open source community. Modifying what already exists is perceived as vandalism. Rewriting from scratch, even when the conceptual result is almost identical, is celebrated as visionary. Cosmic benefits from this new project immunity, where stability, functional completeness, and even aesthetic coherence all become secondary to the promise of a coming revolution. From a visual standpoint, Cosmic makes a series of questionable choices that deserve attention. The nebulous background, atmospheric yes, systematically compromises readability when combined with translucent UI elements. The color palette, saturated tones, fluorescent icons, electric blue highlights, produces what can only be described as visual noise. And when visual noise dominates an interface, hierarchy inevitably collapses. The eye loses its anchors. The mind struggles to set priorities. The bottom dock, dimensionally disproportionate, together with icons that swing between flat, semi-realistic, and outlined styles, reveals a lack of unified vision. The result is less a coherent system and more a collage of mismatched pieces. In an era where visual coherence has become a cardinal principle of interface design, and one only needs to observe the strict guidelines of GNOME's Human Interface Guidelines, or KDE's conventions, Cosmic seems to deliberately ignore them. The outcome is an environment that, while technically functional, never achieves that harmony which transforms isolated parts into a true ecosystem. But aesthetics, however relevant, could still be fixed with thematic revision. The deeper problems are structural. They concern the philosophy of the interface itself. Take the application launcher. Cosmic attempts a compromise between GNOME's full-screen overview and the classic menus of KDE or Mint, but it fails to capture the strengths of either. It lacks the immersive focus of GNOME. It lacks the immediate practicality of a drop-down. The user is left in a UX limbo, a state of hesitation suspended between two models. The workspace overview suffers the same fate. Overcrowded, pushed against the top bar, it feels like an addition glued on afterwards rather than a natural part of the flow. In GNOME, the workspace system integrates seamlessly into the user's mental model. In Cosmic, it feels like a plug-in, a feature added for differentiation rather than functional necessity. Here we come to the central issue. Where does true innovation reside in Cosmic? Are we witnessing a paradigm shift or simply a competent restyling? The Rust rewrite, while technically commendable, does not in itself constitute conceptual innovation. No new interaction metaphor emerges, no unprecedented grammar of interfaces, no vision that genuinely breaks with the past. System 76's decision to abandon GNOME extensions, given their fragility, and to rebuild Cosmic entirely in Rust, represents sound reasoning. GNOME's trajectory diverged from Sys76's vision, and since extensions were fragile, a complete rewrite made sense, even if the choice carries its own risks. The community's enthusiasm for Rust has created what might be called Rust exceptionalism, the assumption that simply using Rust automatically delivers innovation. Cosmic employs the Rust-based Iced Graphics Toolkit, introduces custom theming, streamlined window tiling, but these technological foundations do not, by themselves, resolve the deeper challenges of interface design. Cosmic is now available on multiple distributions, Fedora, NixOS, Arch, OpenSUSE, and others, which shows healthy ecosystem adoption. This cross-distro availability is important, helping avoid the isolation that often plagues single vendor environments. But distribution adoption does not guarantee user adoption. Desktop users are conservative. They invest years of time, habits, and muscle memory in their chosen environment. To win them over, 
Cosmic must provide compelling advantages over established alternatives, not just parody dressed up in better branding. Returning to our central question, real innovation or cosmetic update, the evidence of Alpha 7 gives us a mixed verdict. Features like global application shortcuts, improved workspace management, and comprehensive accessibility support are meaningful functional advances, and yet the overall design still feels derivative. The launcher borrows without mastering. The settings organization copies familiar patterns without refining them. Workspace management adds functions without rethinking the metaphor. Community dynamics reinforce this problem. The reception in Linux media has been overwhelmingly positive. Quotes such as, the foundation seems very solid, or there's such cool power user potential here, dominate the coverage. The new project immunity remains strong. Criticism is almost absent from mainstream Linux discourse, and this creates a dangerous feedback loop. Without substantive critique, developers mostly hear praise, even when decisions might require reconsideration. The echo chamber effect rewards affirmation while silencing the honest evaluation that could actually guide meaningful improvement. To see what genuine innovation looks like, we can look elsewhere. Consider Andreas Kling's Serenity OS, an operating system built from scratch, kernel included, with its own browser and rendering engine, and a permission model inspired by OpenBSD while still maintaining Unix compatibility. That is systemic innovation, architectural vision, years of deep design work, and yet Serenity OS generates only a fraction of Cosmic's hype, or Hyperland. I do not use it, and I do not share its usability approach, yet it shows structural coherence. Its cyberpunk aesthetic matches its philosophy. It achieves a consistency that Cosmic fails to deliver. This is not hostility toward change. It is not conservative nostalgia. It is about distinguishing genuine innovation from marketing disguised as progress. As long as we mistake luminous effects for substance, we will multiply empty showcases at the expense of truly useful tools. Cosmic has real potential. It can improve, but this requires honesty. It requires criticism. It requires the courage to resist uncritical veneration. Blind worship serves neither Cosmic nor the wider Linux ecosystem. And so the fundamental question remains, sharp, uncomfortable, and unavoidable. Are we building the future of the desktop, or are we simply repainting the present with brighter colors?